Um, and to that point, you know, we think mobile devices are increasingly becoming connected to home entertainment equipment. Uh, the easiest example of this is, you know, many more, you know, you see a lot of phones coming out these days with the, the micro HDMI connection, which allows for a very easy connection from the phone to the television or to the home theater AVR system. Um, I, I guess some other trends we see is, you know, the mobile industry is seeking some brand credibility. Again, you know, people see this and they see a phone. So, you know, what can they, what can a mobile manufacturer do to make people think, hey, this is not just a phone, this is something maybe I want to listen to music on. Um, and of course, uh, as I talked about before, you know, one of the unique requirements of mobile is that you need, typically you need very efficient audio delivery mechanisms, especially if you're talking about over the air delivery, over 2G, 3G, and maybe 4G networks in the future. So this is the ecosystem, the mobile ecosystem, uh, as we view it today, kind of from, a, from an entertainment audio perspective. So here we have the, the mobile device, whether it be a phone or a tablet. We see, we see content being delivered, especially high definition content being delivered to the device over Wi-Fi networks. You know, that's, a, that's increasingly becoming a very common way that someone's home, their phone connects to a Wi-Fi network and then they, they, they have the ability to download high definition content over that Wi-Fi network to their mobile device. So what kind of post-processing enhancements can you bring to a, to a phone? I mean, obviously you have some limitations on a phone. The, the speakers are sometimes mono, but you know, like this, I have an M97 mini here, which has stereo, two speakers. Um, obviously headphone jacks are also probably the most popular way uh, listening to content on your phone. So what are the enhancements that you can bring for the entertainment experience on a mobile phone? So I've used some examples here of post-processing technologies from our Adobe Mobile feature set, uh, which I think are, are fairly common. Uh, even in our competitors, you'll see very uh, kind of a common uh, types of features they're trying to offer. Of course, I, I believe ours are the best. Um, you have mobile surround. Uh, so mobile surround is, is a virtualizer. Uh, so a virtualizer is, um, you know, you take two-channel uh, content or five-channel content, and you create, a, you create a virtual surround sound experience using any set of headphones. And for those of you who are more audio, you know, you use things like HTRF. You use kind of delays in the audio to trick your ears into thinking that sounds are from behind or to the sides or in front. Um, in other products, Dolby calls these technologies Dolby Headphone. In a mobile, we call this mobile surround. Uh, you have the sound space uh, technologies where we try to recreate a, personal, a perfect listening environment, especially uh, this is very effective if you're using speakers in a mobile a phone, um, where what we try to do is uh, we try to create a wider sound field, uh, again, using some, some tricks to the ear to make you, your ears think that if you're listening to speakers on a mobile phone, the, the audio is wider than what it actually is. Uh, a bass enhancement technologies are very common in, in many devices uh, where you try to boost the bass level, and there's varying different ways you can do that. Uh, high frequency enhancer, so especially content like very lossy MP3s, one of the very first things you lose is the higher frequencies, so we try to replace that in a very natural way. So, you know, a lot of people come to me and say, well, you know, the most important thing is, you know, uh, does your product make MP3 sound better? Well, this is one of the ways you make MP3 sound better. You know, if a piece of content is really lossy, which means that you, know, you lost a lot of information when it was encoded, there's no preset equalizers that are kind of tuned to the handset or equalizers that can be uh, you know, adjusted by the end user, you know, the little up and down knobs that you saw in your home AVR. And then sound leveler controllers. Because the content on a mobile phone was maybe recorded in the 60s, it's very soft. Then you listen to the next song and it's recorded in the 2000s, and it's really loud, and so you're constantly changing the volume on your mobile phone. So again, a, a leveler is a, a very useful feature um, when experiencing any kind of entertainment on a mobile device. Things like, uh, remember before I mentioned things like container support, so we, we, we offer, make sure you, that those features are very robust. And then we add in the decoder support in Adobe Mobile 3, which is Adobe Pulse, and then Adobe Mobile 3 Plus, Dolby Pulse and Dolby Digital Plus. Uh, again, we see the phone becoming more of an HD device, so Dolby Digital Plus is very important. So now let's talk about the PC ecosystem. You know, the PC is more interesting because you have Microsoft Windows. You know, Microsoft Windows today, especially Windows 7, has become a very, very robust multimedia system where basically all the codec support is taken care of by Microsoft Windows, all the container support. Uh, basically, you, know, you don't need to worry about any of that if you're a, if you're a PC manufacturer. 
They are listening to music, playing games, watching video, streaming radio. And I'm sure since we've done this research, this number has only gone up. So first of all, people are using PC for entertainment. And improving that audio experience on your PC will definitely benefit you. Second of all, and, you know, I must say even I found this research to be kind of surprising. How are they listening to audio? You would be shocked how many people use their PC speakers to listen to audio on their PC. Uh, you know, they're in their hotel room. They just they put it, you know, especially with wireless networks, you know, they just put it on their coffee table. Um, you know, I think even myself, I had a perception that most people used headphones, but that's not true. Most people use the speakers built in your PC. So, you know, I know it's very common that that's a, one of the, in a design consideration, that's one of the very first things that maybe where we try to cost down or there's not enough space because we need a, you know, heat sink or something like that. But it is an important thing in a PC because people do use them. And then, uh, so external speakers, uh, sorry, the, these are the PCs, built-in PC speakers. Headphones obviously are still very important. Um, external home speakers, headsets, and then connecting to a home theater system is probably uh, a lower use case, but still, um, still is definitely there.